Welcome to the fourth LaTeX tutorial on lists and list structures. During this tutorial, we'll learn techniques for formatting lists that are itemized, enumerated, or descriptive in nature. Lists can be useful structural elements in a document when you need to quickly organize and present categorical or even sequential information. When used judiciously, lists can help you to draw attention to key ideas in your work or to the fundamental steps of a process. LaTeX comes with three options for formatting list structures in your document. Itemize is for unordered lists, enumerate is for ordered lists, and description is for descriptive lists. As we'll see, these can be used independently or nested together. The three lists we will work on share very similar structure. They're all environments, so lists are encapsulated within a list-like environment that is demarcated with a begin statement and an end statement. Each item within a list is initiated with an item command. Unordered lists are encapsulated within an itemize environment. They are opened and closed with begin itemize and end itemize. Each item within an unordered list will be highlighted with a bullet. In markup, it's initialized with the item command. The bulleted list on this slide we're looking at now is an example of an unordered itemized list. Ordered lists, on the other hand, are encapsulated within an enumerate environment. They're open and closed with begin enumerate and end enumerate. Each item within an ordered list will be highlighted with a numerical label. The value of the label is established and updated by an internal counter. In markup, it's initialized with the item command. It's also worth knowing, since the items of an enumerated list do have internal counters, they can have labels attached to them, and you can refer to those labels from elsewhere within your text using the reference command or the slash ref command. The numbered list on this slide is an example of an ordered enumerate list. Finally, descriptive lists are encapsulated within a description environment. They are opened and closed with a begin description and end description set of delimiters. Each item within a descriptive list will be highlighted with a descriptive text label. The contents of the label are set by you through an optional argument fed to the item command through its square brackets. The descriptive list on this slide is an example of a description list. In LaTeX, lists can be embedded within other lists. A simple example appears below, where we see two levels of unordered lists, one nested within the other. What we can see is that the inner lists, or each level of an inner list, gets indented a little bit in order to uh, visually showed that it's it's a, a nested list. When nesting lists within lists, you can also mix list types. The following example on the slide we're looking at now illustrates how this might look in practice. And what we can see is that the outermost structure is a description list. Each item of the descriptive list has a itemized list with a couple of bullets attached to it, a couple of items attached to it. And then the very last item of the itemized list belonging to the last element of the descriptive list has a enumerate list nested within that. Through the use of additional packages, LaTeX provides some functionality for customizing the look and the feel and even the functionality of its list structures. A good place to start learning about this is in the LaTeX Wikibook chapter on list structures. The link is given, given here for, for us to work with. List structures, among the things that we've been learning about with LaTeX, certainly are not the most difficult to learn in the master. So typically trial and error and just general experimentation is going to be a good way for you to gain proficiency with list structures within LaTeX. We'll conclude this tutorial by looking at a LaTeX markup example that illustrates how many of the lists that we've seen on these slides would look if we, we put them into an ordinary document. What we're looking at is 
the sample LaTeX document for this tutorial. It's a pretty simple document. It begins like most of the documents that we've worked with so far. It uses the article document class. It's given a title and author and a date that get rendered later on in the document with the make title command. And it has a brief abstract. But what's relevant and important to us for the purposes of this tutorial is that there's a section for each of the different types of lists we've seen examples of. And so our first example is the unordered list that's opened and closed by a begin itemize statement. As we stated in the tutorial slides, each bulleted item within the itemized environment is, is initiated with an item command with no, no optional arguments or no mandatory arguments given to it, just, just slash item. Then all the text that follows slash item makes up the sentence or sentences that follow the first bullet in that environment. And you don't move on to the next bullet until another slash item is issued. It's, it's right here. Unordered lists behave essentially the same way, except they are created with the enumerate environment. So they're opened and closed with begin and end enumerate. Um, each line in each, so each item within that enumerate environment is once again created or initiated with a slash item command. And there's no optional arguments given to those either. The visual difference that we can see is that since it's an ordered or enumerated list, instead of bullets, each item is marked with a numerical label. And again, it looks essentially like what we saw in the slides, except now there's no blue bullets around those numbers. They're just ordinary numerical labels. The third elementary example of lists were descriptive lists. And so in this example, we create a descriptive list with the begin and end description delimiters. And um, each item is created in that environment with the slash item command as well, except this time we, we need to supply it with an optional argument that's going to be the, the label or the tag that's used to mark the beginning of each item. And these are just um, text. No, usually a, a word, preferably a short word, is, is a good choice. And so I've used the labels of environment, elements, and example for this descriptive list. We can see that it's fed to item through the square brackets because those are optional arguments. And we can see that this is, this is how they look in our... I'll blow it up a little bit. I haven't done that for the others, but in our, our formatted document, we can see this is an example of what that descriptive list looks like. So there's a little bit of indentation once you move to a new line of text, but before you move to the next item in that environment. So the, the, the text labels stick out to the left a little bit of, of what looks like the ordinary left margin of text for that descriptive list environment. This was the example where we just listed or, or nested itemized lists within itemized lists. The way that works is that you have an outer itemized environment that's opened and closed with begin itemize. The first item is issued. And then after that, but before we move to the next item, it's just a embedded begin and end itemize environment with its own items. And so what those represent in this, this formatted document is that here is the first item of the outer list. And then these dashes are the two bulleted items that come with the inner list. So those are the ones that are highlighted in the, the markup text right now. The next item, ordered lists are, summar or are for summarizing processes or ranked ideas. That, that comes after this first inner nested itemized environment is closed, and that's this item right here. And then right after it, but before moving on to the next item, we nest another begin itemize and end itemize environment, and so on. That, that pattern just, just continues. Uh, throughout the, the rest of this, this nested itemized structure. When we moved on and looked at our final example, where we were nesting 
list environments, but multiple list environments. You know, remember the output looked looked like this, where the outermost layer was going to be a descriptive list. Each item of the descriptive list had a itemize list attached to it. And then the very last item of the very last itemized list had an enumerate list embedded in that. So there were three levels of listing in this example. And we can look closely at the markup code to see how that's accomplished. And that, that's right here. So begin description, end description encapsulates the whole thing. We have one item for the first descriptive tag and it's, it's text that goes along with it. And after that, we nested an itemized environment that's attached to that, that first item. Then we move on to the next item of the descriptive list. And we attach to that another nested itemize environment, opened and closed with begin and end itemize. We moved on to the third descriptive list item and attach to it an itemize environment, in this case with three items attached to it. Those three items are right here. But that last item has one level of nesting deeper attached to it, an enumerate environment that, that um, is, is attached to that very last item that's labeled pitfalls. So that's a pretty good example of how you can nest lists within lists. And in this case, sometimes to different levels of nesting, different, different depths of nesting. The, um, the first two items in the descriptive list just had one layer of, or one, yeah, one layer of depth of nesting that happened after it. But then the very last item within the descriptive list had a list within it, and then one of its list items had a list within it. So that, that last item had three uh, layers of, of listing depth associated with it. And you can do that. There are some pitfalls to this. You, if you make a list that's too deep, it start you start running out of horizontal space on your page. We can already see in this this document that you know the uh, indentation is pretty wide, and that that's something that you can actually control uh, if, if you get in and 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 uh, look at the LaTeX wiki book about how to control somewhat the the style of these list environments. But the point is, is that every time you you um, nest a list within a list, you're going to have some indentation that happens. And you can get this kind of stair step effect across your page if you nest too, too deep of a le level and it just gets kind of hard to follow and read. So I tend to try to use my lists sparingly and judiciously so that I'm just getting the key ideas across. and I'm not trying to express enormous amounts of detail. And that's really all there is to know, at least at this, this early stage, about lists and list structures. As I said, I think it's one of the simpler document features that you can learn and, and learn to master in LaTeX. So it's just worth diving into it and maybe using this sample code as a beginning template if you have a need for lists and list structures in your, your document. Um, and, and I think you'll get it pretty quickly. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial on lists and list structures. I hope you found it helpful and uh, that we'll see you again in our future LaTeX tutorials.